Yo, what's up guys, Joey here. I know it's been a while. I'll go ahead and explain why I've been gone so long. I recently got a new apartment, my first apartment. This is it. Today, we're gonna be building another gaming PC. The budget is $1,000. You've read the title. This is gonna be a full guide. So I'm gonna be showing you everything you need to know. If you've never built a gaming PC, you're in the right place. Everything from start to finish. So what are we gonna be covering in this video? What are you guys gonna be learning? Well, first things first, I'm gonna go over all the parts and why I picked them. Second, we're gonna be building the PC. I'm gonna show you guys how to build it step by step. And then third, we're gonna be playing games in real time. So yeah, guys, this is gonna be a pretty long video. So I'm gonna go ahead and jump right into it. So first things first, guys, go ahead and get your motherboard and your CPU. We have our SATA cables. So yeah, make sure to get these two tools out, your IO shield and this. This is pretty interesting. I'll go over it later in the video. We're gonna open up our i5-8600K. This is a six core processor. This CPU is clocked at 3.6 gigahertz, but it has a max turbo of 4.3 gigahertz. Our CPU, our i5, we paid $239 for it. Our motherboard, we paid $104 for it. As far as the chipset of our motherboard, it's obviously the Z370 chipset, which allows us to overclock our Intel CPUs. This is a gigabyte motherboard. It's one of the, it's the best seller on Amazon as far as budget Z370 motherboards go. It's gonna get the job done. If you wanna be a baller, then you can pick up the motherboard from the Asus ROG line. They look a lot more pleasing in the aesthetics department. But yeah, as far as Z370 motherboards go, this is the best bang for your buck, which is why I chose to go with this one. So here we have our i5, and as you can see, in the bottom left-hand corner, we have a little arrow. You're gonna line up that arrow with the arrow on the motherboard. So see, here's the arrow on the CPU socket on the motherboard. So we're just gonna go ahead and pull this to the right-hand side, lift it up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and hold the CPU just like this, and I'm gonna slowly place it down, and it should just go in just like that. Don't push the CPU down because you might bend the pins. You shouldn't require any force on this. It should just fall in naturally. And go ahead and just put the little lever back down, pull it up a bit so you could be able to push this under the screw, pull it down. You should feel a little bit of tension, that's normal. The top lid will come off, pull it to the right hand side, then pull it under this little thing and just let it go in there, CPU installed. Fairly simple process. Remember, don't be scared of the tension, that's normal. You should feel a little bit of tension. Okay, so now our CPU obviously needs to be cooled. Our theme of the build is gonna be, well, white and blue, but it's gonna, I'm gonna stick the new Frozone Funko Pop in there. So it's gonna look pretty cool. It's gonna match the build. How much did I pay for this CPU cooler? This CPU cooler was only 30 bucks. Okay guys, so before we get into this, go ahead and get all the parts that we're gonna need and all the parts we're not gonna need. Parts we're not gonna need. These are irrelevant for the socket that we're installing. So go ahead and get rid of these parts. These are the parts we're gonna be using. Okay, so I unassembled that so I can show you guys how to do it from scratch. This part right here has a plastic cover. Do not remove this. This is gonna go under the motherboard like this. So first thing you wanna do is get these little screws and you're gonna wanna put them in like that sideways. You're gonna wanna put it on the closest circle, not the last circle, and the last one in on the closest circle. Now to secure these in, go ahead and put this rubber in just like that on all sides. All right, so now these screws are secured. We're gonna line it up with the four dots on our motherboard. I'm gonna do it upside down to make life easier. Okay, should just fall into place. Turn the motherboard around. So now we're gonna need these things. Put one right here on all four of the screws. Just like that, they should slide right in real easy. Okay, so now next step, we're gonna need these two parts. Make sure they're facing like this, this way. So this thing needs to be sticking up, not the other way around. So go ahead and line up the middle hole of this thing with the screw. And do the same thing for the other one. So now we're gonna be taking a look at this part. It has two sides. This side's gonna be facing the top. Make sure this side is facing the bottom. And we're just gonna tighten it with our fingers. As far as how tight you need to do it, you can't really over tighten it with your fingers. So as soon as your finger just starts slipping off of the thing, then that means it's tight enough. And go ahead and do the same for all three remaining sides. All right guys, so we're more than halfway done. This heatsink comes with included thermal paste. I'm not gonna be using the included thermal paste. I'm gonna be using Arctic Silver 5 thermal paste. As far as all the parts used in this build, they will be linked in the video description. So we're gonna need to remove the middle fan. In order to remove the middle fan, all you have to do is push up on this and push up on the other side. And there, the fan is now unclipped and you just simply 
take it out. So go ahead and take our final part and place it in the middle of the heat sink. So just like that, it should sit right into place. So now we can go ahead and remove the protective. Now we're gonna put thermal paste onto our CPU. You wanna put like a pea-sized amount right in the middle of our CPU. So I'm gonna go ahead and just squeeze. And that should be enough. That's like a pea size. Try to not make it too messy. So I'm just gonna try to make sure it doesn't come off. Okay, there you go. Now guys, that's really messy. I'm sure you guys will do a better job than me, but that's fine. Now I'm gonna slowly place it down, make sure it's aligned. I'm not gonna screw in one side completely. I'm gonna screw in one of the sides just like halfway and then screw the other side in halfway go ahead and switch the motherboard over. I am applying quite a bit of force here, guys. Looks like the previous screw I screwed in a little more than halfway. And as far as how tight you wanna screw this screw in, pretty much when the screwdriver stops turning. And there, it stopped turning. So I'm not gonna force it anymore. Finish tightening the opposite side all the way. And there, it doesn't turn anymore. We're done with that. All right, so now we wanna go ahead and reinstall our fan and remove this fan because it's blocking our RAM slots. So what RAM did we decide to go with? Well, we went with an eight gigabyte kit, two sticks of four gigabytes. The RAM's rated at 2,666 megahertz. How much did we pay for this RAM kit? This RAM kit ran us $101. We're gonna open up the gray ones. So open up this one and open up this one. And that's where we're gonna be popping in our RAM. It doesn't go in either way. It only goes in one way, so you can't put it in wrong. So I'm gonna go ahead and align the RAM stick in the RAM slot, and I'm gonna press down with not too much force, but it is gonna require some force, and then it should just click right in. Both slots will lift back into place. We're gonna do the same for the second stick of RAM, align it into place, and click down with force. And as you can see right here, our RAM barely fits. This is low profile RAM, so if you're gonna be using this heatsink, make sure you purchase low profile RAM, because if not, yeah, it's probably not gonna fit. So it's looking real clean right now. We got the white on white. So we're done working on our motherboard for now. I'm gonna go ahead and take the case out of its box. So this is the Inwin 101 and it's an ATX case. As far as ATX cases go, this one's on the smaller side of ATX cases. You'll see what I'm talking about. Cable management in this case, it's gonna be a little bit more tedious than other ATX cases, but it's gonna be worth it because it's a smaller size to take the panel off it's really convenient you simply just click out no tools required and the lid pops right out this case supports six fans and that's why we picked up six fans you don't necessarily need to cop six fans i just did it because well for the looks and of course more fans does promote better airflow obviously these fans cost seven dollars and 75 cents a pop so i bought six so the total that i spent on fans was $47 for these six fans. This case also has a dust filter on the bottom. Now I've actually worked with this case before, so I already learned the hard way that, well, cable management is very tedious in this case. As far as the accessories that this case comes with, it's really unique. Most cases don't come with these accessories and they don't come packaged in the manner that these came packaged. So you have your case manual, don't really need that. GPU support bracket, we're not gonna be using that. Plenty of zip ties for cable management so you don't have to worry about buying additional zip ties. And the screws. So as you can see, all the screws are packaged separately. Most case manufacturers don't do this surprisingly. They should because it makes it easier on the consumer as far as navigating through the screws and whatnot. So first thing you wanna do is make sure you put all the motherboard standoffs in the appropriate position to support whatever motherboard it is you chose to go with. So taking a look at our motherboard, it has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven motherboard standoff slots. And last one's gonna go right here. All the other motherboard standoffs are already placed in the appropriate position. Okay, cool. We're now ready to screw in our motherboard, but we're not gonna do it right this moment. We wanna have really good cable management in this case. So unfortunately, we have to kind of wait till we screw in the motherboard. Okay, so I'm now gonna install the three bottom fans. All right, so this thing went ahead and fell. I'm gonna leave it out of there for now. So as far as fan cable management, this is the only slot we have. If we don't use this slot, then we're gonna have to wire the fan cables all the way over here, and that's gonna look messy. So I'm gonna go ahead and 
place all three fans into the case. As far as what position I'm gonna place them in, I'm placing them in the position that makes it easier for me to wire the cable through this slot right here. I haven't screwed anything in yet. And the placement of the fan, I placed them down like this because that way the case is gonna pull in air from the bottom and then it's gonna blow it out through here and then it's gonna blow it out through here. So for each fan, you have to connect it into a fan header on the motherboard. We're using a lot of fans for this build, six fans. Our motherboard doesn't have six fan headers, so we're gonna need to use fan splitters. This fan splitter is gonna hook into one of the fan headers, and now we're gonna have two fan inputs. So each set of two fan splitters cost $6, so for both of them, it ran us $12. So the first fan splitter, we're gonna be hooking into the top left corner of our motherboard. We're gonna be hooking in two fan splitters in the very bottom of the motherboard, actually. And I'm gonna work in the fan splitter from the hole that the fans went through just lifting up the motherboard and working it through just like that. I'm gonna go ahead and hold the motherboard from the back of the case with my left hand, and I'm gonna use my right hand to plug in the splitters. So they're right next to each other, the two fan headers. There's one and then the second one. So the fans are aligned right there. Before we move further along into the building process, I wanna first tell you guys about the remaining parts we chose to go with. So the graphics card is, of course, the GTX 1060. This is the six gigabyte version. As far as how much we paid for it, we paid $285 for this GPU. When GPUs were really inflated, GTX 1060s were going for like over $400, which is pretty crazy. So yep, we got this one under 300. That's awesome. As far as our power supply, we're going with a 500 watt bronze rated semi-modular power supply. So what does semi-modular even mean? Well, allow me to show you guys. If it was fully modular, this power supply cable wouldn't also be connected to it. But since it's semi-modular, only this cable is gonna be connected to it. If the power supply wasn't modular, they would obviously all be connected. So why are modular power supplies even cool? Well, it's because it helps out with our cable management. You're not necessarily gonna need to use all the cables for your power supply. So if you don't need to use them, you simply don't plug it in, which then allows more room to cable manage your cables more nicely. We're gonna wanna connect our CPU power cable first before we screw in our motherboard. And here's our CPU power cable. So the side you're gonna wanna place the power supply into the case is with the fan facing down. Put it all the way to the side. So it's gonna clip in from the top side. So there goes one side and it's now clicked in. Now remember, you don't necessarily have to go through all this hassle. You can just wire the cables through here, but I'm trying to achieve the best possible cable management setup with this case. It's very time consuming, but it's worth it. Okay guys, so now we just have to hook up two more cables to our motherboard for us to then finally be able to screw in our motherboard into the case. So the first cable we're gonna be hooking up is actually a case cable. So this cable is from the case, obviously. I'm gonna go ahead and work it in from the bottom from, you know, where all the other cables went in through. Looks like I have to move this fan over a bit to get the cable to fit in there. We're gonna hook up our HD audio cable to our HD audio input on the motherboard. And like most of the other cables, it only goes in one way. And there, it goes in just like that. So what does that cable do? On top of our case right here, pretty much we have a headphone jack and a microphone jack. So that cable connects these inputs to the motherboard so we could use them. So finally, the last cable, once again, another case cable. It's this one right here. It's gonna say power switch and HDD LED. What do these cables do? Well, it's what connects the power switch to the motherboard. So when you then click the button, the computer turns on. I'm gonna wire them through the same spot once again. So before we hook up those two final cables to our motherboard, we're gonna need to first hook them up to this little tool. This tool is then gonna hook up to our motherboard. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it. By the way, this thing comes included with your motherboard. We're gonna be using the HDD side and the PW side, which is pretty much power switch and it's gonna snap in just like that. As far as what way it goes in, it doesn't matter. Each way will be fine. I'm gonna turn it back around. All right, so we have both plugged in just like that. Make sure the PW, the power switch is facing up just like this, and we're gonna hook it up right here. Okay guys, so remember, the PW one has to be on top, and the HD one is on the bottom right there. I can now finally screw in our motherboard into the case. So I'm first aligning the USB ports of the motherboard with the back of the IO shield. I know you guys can't see it, but make sure you align it correctly so then you could actually then push it in. And our final screw on the top left of the motherboard. 
I just need to hook up this fan splitter to the CPU fan header on the motherboard. Now I'm gonna wire our two fan cables through the top and I'll leave that like that for now. So now we're gonna actually have to flip over our case to screw in the fans. I'm gonna be using tape to just secure the fans because if not, they're just gonna fall. This will make life easier for me. You'll see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna use the included silver screws to secure these fans. All right, so I finished securing this fan with all the four screws. I'm not gonna fully tighten it yet. First, I'm gonna screw in the rest of the fans and then once I have them all laid out how I want them, then I'll finally finish screwing them in all the way. All right guys, so this little fan cable is not fitting through the motherboard. I'm gonna unscrew the top left. So I'm just gonna push the motherboard back a little bit with my finger and try to make it squeeze through. I'm gonna now re-secure that motherboard screw. See how you're able to measure the height of the fan? So yeah, for our case, we're gonna have it on the very bottom. All our fans are installed now. So these are our power supply cables. All the cables are gonna be labeled. As you can see, these two right here are both labeled SATA. We're gonna be hooking up both of these. Now, the next cable we're gonna be hooking in, it's gonna be labeled VGA. This is the cable that's gonna power our graphics card. So our final cable is labeled Perif. Now for this build, we don't need it, so we're not gonna bother hooking this one in. Okay guys, so I know we have a lot of cables here. I know it could look a little intimidating. It's not, we're gonna take it one cable at a time. So the biggest cable of them all from the power supply that's gonna power most of our motherboard is the 24 pin cable. I'm just gonna go ahead and wire it to the front. This is our USB 3.0 cable. I'm gonna wire this one also right here, right under the big one, like that. Now the cable that's gonna power our graphics card, the VGA cable, I'm gonna wire this cable through the very bottom down here. Okay guys, so now we wanna hook up this big old cable. It's gonna clip in like the other cables. This cable is gonna require a bit of force. So I have it in the slot right now, but it still needs to be pushed in more. So I'm gonna use my fingers and I'm gonna put them on the back of the motherboard and then use my thumb to push it in. So the motherboard won't bend when I'm applying force to it because there is no screw support on this part. Now to hook up our USB 3.0 cable that hooks up right under it. It only goes in one way. There you go, that looks very clean. And our final cable is to power our graphics card. We'll save that for the end. Okay, so let's try to organize these cables a bit. Remember, we have case cables, we have power supply cables, and that's really it. So why don't we go ahead and take care of our fans first? Okay guys, so let's start off with our CPU fans. So remember, this fan splitter was hooked up to our CPU input, so it's very important that you connect it with the CPU fans, which was two of them. So we're gonna do that first. Our CPU fans are now connected and powered. We have two fan splitters over here. So I'll connect this side fan to one of these. I'll connect one of the bottom three fans to this one. And we now have two more fans on the bottom, which I will connect to these. And our final two side fans are gonna connect to these two fan splitters down here. And there we go, all our fans are now connected. Moving on to the storage part of our build, we're gonna be using an SSD plus hard drive combo. The SSD is gonna be used to install our operating system, Windows 10, and programs. SSDs are a lot faster than hard drives, so when Windows 10 is installed on an SSD, your computer's gonna start up a lot quicker compared to as if you had your Windows 10 operating system installed onto your hard drive. So this case supports two SSDs. In order to install our SSD, you simply unscrew it, and then you secure the SSD using the little screws that came included with the case insert it in and resecure our SSD. Our hard drive is where we're gonna be installing only our games because nowadays games are very large in size. Some games are even over 100 gigs. It's pretty crazy. So definitely gonna need a two terabyte hard drive in 2018. A one terabyte hard drive would also be good, but you know how much one terabyte hard drives are? They're actually $50. This is only seven more dollars and you get a whole terabyte extra. So yeah, definitely worth it to pay the extra seven dollars, wouldn't you say? So I'm just gonna remove our drive cage. You're gonna want these points of the hard drive to be facing the backside of the case. Right here, I'm gonna hold the hard drive into place and just pull up on the plastic. It won't break. And then pull it up and over into the hard drive and then just push down these four little points and it should clip in just like that. You can then choose to screw it in for more security as far as the hard drive 
but you don't really need to. I'm gonna go ahead and do it, why not? You're gonna use these big screws that came with the case, the same screws we used to secure our motherboard into the case. So now we actually have to connect our storage devices to the motherboard so it could actually read the data. That's when the SATA cables come in. I'm gonna use the top ones because those are the ones that are gonna be closest to this for neater cable management. And I'm gonna just wire it to the back side of the case. So these are the inputs in the back of the hard drive. This is the SATA cable, it's gonna power it. And this is this other SATA cable, it's gonna read the data. They're both called SATA, one's bigger than the other. So I'm gonna hook up one of the SATA cables to the hard drive to read the data from it. And then I'm gonna get a SATA power cable from the power supply to power our hard drive. All right there, so our hard drive is now powered and connected to the motherboard. We're gonna do the same thing for our SSD. It also has the same inputs. Done. Now we have one more little SATA cable hanging from our case. This is gonna be used to power the lights from our case. The case actually has LEDs right here. And I'm just gonna hook it up to one of our power supply SATA cables. And there we pretty much completed all the wiring for the necessary stuff. Now I'm gonna be installing an RGB LED strip to add lighting inside the case. This is totally optional. You don't need to do this. So I have my RGB LED strip right here. This will be linked in the video description in case you guys want to include this into your build. So the way I'm going to stick this thing in there is I'm going to have one of the strips in the bottom. And in order to make it fit through there, I have to first place it on its side like that to make it squeeze in through there. Once it squeezes in through there, I'm then going to lie it flat. And this RGB strip is actually magnetic. And the other one we're just going to place along the side right here. So as far as how I'm going to wire this, I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to bring this side through the back of the case on the side of the hard drive cage. It should come out. Here it is. And then hook it in. Tuck this in. And there you go. That looks really clean. It's not visible, which is how I want it. Moving on to the back side of our case, we're going to now going to power this. Line it up arrow to arrow. And it's powered through SATA. So just plug it into one of the SATA power cables. We'll plug it into this one right here. So as far as what this little box is, it's the controller and then this is the remote. So as you can see, you can change the colors and you could change the brightness and the speed and different effects and whatnot of your lights for your case. And our GPU, behold, our GTX 1060, six gigabyte. Tara, ain't she beautiful? Now with GPUs, one of the ways that they cut cost is by, well, not including a backplate. When you start approaching the more enthusiast range of graphics cards, such as a GTX 1080 Ti, pretty much all GTX 1080 Ti's have backplates. But yeah, with 1060s, there's some 1060s that have backplates, but not the one we got. So we're gonna click in our GPU into this slot on our motherboard. We're gonna need two slots for it, so we're gonna unscrew, not the first one, but the second and the third ones. And just line it up with the slot. And you're gonna hear a click. And now just secure your GPU. Okay, so gonna position it. So see how this is an eight pin cable? We're only gonna be needing three for this graphics card. If it was a really beefy graphics card, like a GTX 1080, you didn't use more. Since it's only a 1060, we're only going to be using six pins. I'm going to go ahead and position it like that. And I'm going to be using a zip tie right here. So we're done with the front. Nothing else we need to add. Everything looks good and it looks really clean. Well, the Funko Pop, we're going to still stick Frozone in there. Good right there. Okay, looks like we're good to go. In order to stick them on there, all I'm gonna do is use this double-sided tape. Man, it's just so awesome because when I first start these builds, you know, I pick out all the parts, I add them all to my Amazon cart, and then I just picture in my head how all the parts will look, but I won't truly know how it looks till I actually build it. And I've built it, we've built it, and it's amazing. It's better than I pictured it. So while I'm hooking this up, the final price of this build is 
$46. That's not including the Frozone Funko Pop and our RGB LED kit, but it is including the fan extension cables, even though we ended up not even using them. This is a full guide. I'm gonna hook it up to a monitor so we could witness together if it actually is alive. Cool, okay, so as you can see, reboot and select proper boot device. So we're gonna boot Windows 10 from this USB flash drive. It's then gonna install Windows 10 onto our SSD. I've already made a separate video on how to create one of these step-by-step. Step. That video will be linked in the video description. If you don't wanna do that, they actually sell these with Windows 10 already on it. That's of course a bit more pricier, but if you wanna install Windows 10 for free, look at the video that I linked in the video description. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and turn off my computer now. Just click it once and I'm gonna plug in the USB flash drive. So guys, since the drives hooked up to our PC don't have any operating systems, it should boot directly to the USB flash drive without us having to do anything. I'm not gonna turn on our PC. All right, we're in business. Okay. So select your language, English, US, next, install now. So this is how we get Windows 10 for free. It says right here, I don't have a product key. I'm gonna click, I don't have a product key. If you do have a product key, go ahead and insert it right here. I don't have a product key. Now we're gonna select the version of Windows 10 that we wanna install. I wanna install Windows 10 Pro. I'm gonna select that one and then click next. We're just gonna go ahead and pretend like we read this and then I accept the license terms, next. So custom install is what we're gonna wanna select. So here's our drives. Right here we have our two terabyte hard drive and right here we have of course our SSD. Remember, we wanna install Windows 10 on our SSD so Windows could boot up a lot quicker. So just click it once and we're gonna click next. It's now gonna start the installation process. So what it's doing right now is it's copying over the files from the USB to our SSD. Remember when we first inserted the USB drive and turned on the PC, it booted us up to the, you know, what language I wanna to pick to install Windows. A lot of the times when I'm building a PC, if you don't take off the USB when it's restarting, like it just did right now, it'll take you directly to where it was. And what that means is that the PC is still booting from the USB instead of the hard drive. So what you have had to do to solve that problem is turn off the computer, disconnect the USB drive, and now it'll boot to where we want it to boot. Luckily, it booted to where we want it to boot. What I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna be installing the graphics card drivers. So just type in GeForce. It'll take us to GeForce slash drivers. I'm gonna click on the GeForce Experience tab. I'm gonna go ahead and download the GeForce Experience program. I'll just save as, and I'll save it to my desktop. I'm gonna go to steam.com. Navigate over here, view desktop website, install Steam. Um, install Steam now. And this one I'll go ahead and just put, I'll just put run is what I should really be doing. Installing Steam, very simple process. What is the GeForce Experience? The GeForce Experience is the program from NVIDIA that automatically downloads all the drivers you need for your graphics card. And Steam is one of the many programs slash platform, whatever you wanna call it, that allows you to install games. So Steam is for games like Call of Duty and a lot of other games. For example, for EA titles, you download a program called Origin. For Blizzard titles, for example, like Overwatch, you download blizzard.net. Oh, there we go. Okay, no driver found. Cool, continue. And it's gonna download the latest driver right away. So yeah, guys, I don't wanna make this video longer than it has to be. So like I said, Origin for EA titles, Blizzard.net for Overwatch and stuff. For Fortnite, we want to download Epic Games. And those are the three other ones that I'm going to be downloading. So I'm going to go ahead and download those and install those. So let's move on to our drivers. You don't have to update the BIOS for your motherboard. It's not mandatory, but I'm going to show you how to do it because I feel like it's my responsibility. When you update the BIOS, it may or may not improve system stability. Best, we're using Windows 10 64 bits. So our audio driver, we will go ahead and download this one. America. So I'm just gonna save them all to my desktop right now. So that's our audio driver for our chipset drivers. I'm not gonna be installing any chipset drivers. You're free to do so if you please. I'm not gonna install any. LAN, I am gonna install the LAN driver. That's important if you wanna connect to the internet using the ethernet port. I will skip that because I'm using Wi-Fi right now. As far as how I'm using Wi-Fi on this PC, it's because I'm hooked up a USB Wi-Fi adapter. That will be linked in the video description if you're interested in it. This is the SATA one. We're not going to use any of these either. I'm not downloading any. VGA, not going to be using that. BIOS, we are going to download the new Lewis BIOS. We're going to be updating our BIOS. Utilities, we don't need any utilities, nope. Now the newest BIOS is this one. See how it goes by date? So it's the first one up here, the F4 version. So go ahead and select where you're at. I selected America. 
uh, save as desktop. All right, I'm gonna minimize this. This is still downloading. Once this is done downloading, you'll then click install and it'll install. So this is our audio driver and this is our BIOS. They're both zipped. So what you have to do is right click with your mouse and put extract all. And then I'm gonna go ahead and extract it to the desktop and it is now extracting. I'm gonna do the same thing for the BIOS. Right click, extract all, extract to the desktop. So they're now both extracting. I'll go ahead and exit that out. This one's almost done. It's complete. Now we don't need the zip files anymore. I'm just gonna dump them in the recycle bin. The GeForce program is already installed, so we don't need this anymore. I'm gonna dump it. I'm gonna dump it in the recycle bin. So yeah, it's just downloading the graphics card drivers. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up our motherboard BIOS and here's the file that we need. So we're gonna need to hook up a USB, an empty USB to our PC. Up, oh, there you go, it popped up down here. I'm gonna click right here. I'll just put, yeah, open files to, open, blah, 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 whatever. Oh, look, as you can see, I already have a BIOS on here. So yeah, we're not gonna be using that one, so I'm just gonna delete it. Okay, now it's like I have an empty USB flash drive. So I'm gonna drag the BIOS file into the USB flash drive, just like that. This is how you install games from Steam. I'm gonna go to my games library. Here's all the games I've purchased. I'm gonna install Rainbow Six Siege, which is all the way right here. I'm gonna click install. Oh wait, but we can't install it yet because we're gonna install it onto our hard drive. So how do you configure your PC to read your hard drive? Because right now, if we go to this PC, it doesn't show our hard drive. It only shows our USB flash drive where we have our BIOS file and our SSD. So what we're gonna have to do for our hard drive to show up is type in disk in the search bar right here, create and format hard disk partitions. I'm gonna click that and now we're in disk management and right away it reads that we have a hard drive that hasn't yet been well enabled. So I'm just gonna leave this how it is and click okay. Here it is, our two terabyte hard drive. I'm gonna right click this area and I'm gonna put new simple volume. Next, next. Go ahead and choose a drive letter for it. I'm gonna choose G since it's for games, next doesn't really matter what you pick. As far as the title, perform a quick format is good because it's a new drive. Next, finish. And it is enabled. There you go, it just popped up in this PC. So now when we go to our, this PC, our hard drive now shows up and we can now install games. Go to our two terabyte hard drive, right click new folder, and I'm gonna type in, well, Steam. G drive, and we're gonna install in the Steam folder, select. And there we go, Rainbow Six will install into our two terabyte hard drive Steam folder. Hmm. All right, so that's done. Now we're gonna restart our computer to update our BIOS. Please be delete. Oh, it's delete, isn't it? Yes, it's delete. Okay, so yeah, when you restart your PC, just make sure you keep pressing delete on your keyboard to boot up to the BIOS. And now it's gone, what the? Oh, there it is. So once I click help, it'll then bring it up. And then I pick Q flash. Update BIOS. Wow, my mouse, why is the mouse moving so slow? All right, and since we only have our USB hooked up in there, it's only gonna have one file. I select it, and now I click um, this arrow, I believe. Yes, I do. And there you go, it's verting in the file. So do I wanna do it fast or intact? Huh, it gives us two options. Well, I think I wanna do it intact. Yeah, I wanna do it, yeah, I wanna, yeah, it's fine, I could wait. I just wanted to do a job correctly. Uh, yep, all right, so it's updating the BIOS now. No way. I don't believe it. What the, what was that? It did not update the BIOS that quickly. File, oh yeah, look, current flash, BIOS version F4. That's the BIOS we downloaded. It probably said F4 before I started doing it. So yeah, you guys would click this and it would take a while if it's like at F3 or F2 or F1 BIOS. But this motherboard already came with the newest BIOS. I guess that's why it just skipped it and was done really quickly. All right, I'm gonna go back now. So now guys, we're gonna now do our overclocking. I go to advanced frequency settings, yes. So I'm gonna click CPU upgrade and I'm gonna go to i5-8600K, 4.7 gigahertz. Everyone should be able to achieve that hopefully. If not, then you can go ahead and click the smaller one. So it looks like this is a preset and it's automatically gonna then change the settings to achieve this overclock, which is pretty neat. 
So pretty much when you're overclocking, it means we're gonna be changing two values, the speed at which our CPU runs and then the voltage of the CPU. So when you put your CPU at a higher speed, it's gonna need more voltage. So you would go ahead and pick a speed that you want your CPU to run at, and then you're gonna have to be testing that voltage, just starting at a low voltage and then working your way up to the necessary voltage that it needs in order to run at that speed that you want it to run. Remember, the higher your voltage is, the hotter your CPU runs, which means you're gonna get higher temps and we don't want that. This is gonna be a very lazy one. I'm simply clicking this. So yeah, guys, if you want more details as far as overclocking, go ahead and search up YouTube for more in-depth overclocking videos. This video is already long as it is, so you know, just kinda just summarizing the stuff and whatnot. Okay, so that's done. Now I'm gonna click save and exit. Now let's play some games. But first I gotta install the games and that's gonna take forever, so I'm gonna leave the games downloading overnight and I'm now gonna go to bed because the time is, check it out. What's a real person? Oh, I survived the op shot. I have to get the kill now. Yes! Alright, let's do this. Kicking off the CSGO, max out settings, 1080p resolution. Whoa, that was really close. Back there, yup, he's not playing. Move! Oh, he's gonna kill us! What? Are you are you serious? What's going on here? Alright, next area. Ah! No! Oh, that was so lucky. Oh, you're done now. You're done now. <laughs> that bot is just like High as the kite, because his reaction time is slower than the turtle. No, I'm not gonna get anyone. Alright, got the big old rock. Good. Got this. Good job team, good job team. Keep it up. Yes. <laughs> Did we win? Oh my, are they gonna capture it? Oh, okay, we won. What? What? Playing Operate. Alright, guys, so I'm playing Battlefield 1, Ultra Settings Preset. My butt. There's a new part of me. Part I want you to see. Mm. I haven't seen the best of me. I know. You can try to fool yourself. Mm. Without you. But you and him will never feel the way we do. Man. I want to take you out. <laughs> oh, that was a I feel Chris? No! Oh, it's okay. Please don't be up the stairs. Yep. So yeah, I'm still practicing building and whatnot. I probably played Fortnite like less than six hours to be honest with you guys. For the next video, I'm gonna get you guys a lot better gameplay. I need to practice Fortnite. Man, I suck at it. Alright guys, well I'm gonna wrap it up right here.